Hey guys, I hope you've been having fun making your artwork at home and that you had fun making your optical illusions this past week. This week we're going to learn about a different element of art called form. So remember last week when we did the optical illusions we learned a little bit about value and value was basically talking about how light or dark a color is. So this element called form is a little bit similar to shape but there's a big difference. So shape which we talked about a couple months ago, um, was referring to shapes like geometric shapes and organic shapes. So those are talking about your two-dimensional shapes like rectangles and squares and octagons if you're referring to geometric shapes and then two-dimensional organic shapes kind of like cloud shapes or flame shapes. Uh, when we're referring to form, we're going to be talking about shapes that are three-dimensional. So spheres and pyramids, for example. So something to keep in mind that's really important when creating form is how you shade in your object that you wanna make look three-dimensional. So last week when we did optical illusions, we did get to kind of practice shading a bit. So I'm going to pull up the optical illusion that I made as the example last week. So we got to practice form a little bit last week, but we're gonna focus more on it this week. So we actually used form for this project because we were trying to make these sections look more three-dimensional, like they were popping off the page. So we did that by doing this shading technique. So if you guys know what the word highlight means, it's like the lightest area and uh, when you're shading a picture in. So the highlight in here would be in the middle of each of these sections. And then what we did to the edges was make them the darkest and then we lightened them up as they got to the middle or the highlight. So we're gonna kind of use this same technique this week when we're practicing more form. So I'll be showing you a basic shape. I'll show you how to shade in a sphere so that it looks three dimensional. And then I'll show another kind of more fun kind of drawing and how to make that look more three-dimensional. So for this project, what you guys will get to do, you can either pick a more basic shape like a sphere, um, what else, a pyramid. I'm trying to think of all the different three-dimensional shapes, but you get the idea. So you can either pick one of those kind of three-dimensional shapes to make look 3D, or you can pick something more fun for your design. Like I'm going to be making a cactus for the other example. But before we start to do a more detailed picture, I'll show you how to do the basics of shading in an object to look three-dimensional. Okay. So obviously the first thing I'm going to do is just to draw a circle. And I'm probably gonna go back over that in a black marker just in case that's a little hard to see in the video. And for this more simple kind of drawing, I'm just going to use a regular writing pencil for the shading. And then later on when I do the other video where I'm going to show you the cactus, I'll use different colors for that one. So. What you're going to think about first when you are going to be shading is you're going to pretend that there is a light source shining down on your object. So you're going to decide where the sun is hitting on the object. So I'm going to pretend that it's in like this area. So I'm going to draw kind of a small outline of where the light is going to be hitting it. So this area I just outlined right here is going to be the highlight. So again, the lightest area. And then I'm going to have the other areas darker than the highlight. So usually you wanna hold the pencil kind of like that to do the shading. And again, this area is going to be darker and I'm going to make it dark over here as well.
And you can always go back to the edges and make it darker. So I'm gonna go back and make like the very edge darker. So I always think it's easier to start with the darkest points and kind of work your way to the lighter areas. And then I'm just gonna keep continuing in this direction, but Again, this is going to be the darkest through here, and then it's going to get lighter as we get towards that area we marked off as our highlight. So as you're getting to your medium tone, you don't want to press too hard, because the harder you press, the harder or the darker your color is going to come out. So kind of like what we did when we did our optical illusions, we started with the darkest area and then we worked our way to the lightest area. And you just keep pressing lighter and lighter with your pencil to get the tones just right. And I'm just gonna very lightly go over our highlighted area. And then I'll show you a trick. Okay. And then I can still see that outline very faintly I drew earlier where I want my highlight to be. So now I'm just going to kind of follow that and use my eraser. To lighten that up. So it doesn't look completely white, but it looks lighter than the rest of our picture. And then you can always go back over and darken areas up with your pencil. It's always easier to make it too light at first than too dark because once you make something too dark it's really hard to kind of go back and light it up if you press super hard. 
So you wanna draw super light till you get it just right. So I'm gonna darken up those areas on the edge. I'm just going to kinda of go back over my medium tone areas because I don't like to see all those pencil lines. Another trick, if you're also trying to get rid of those kind of like scribbly looking lines, um, this works best with a writing pencil like that. Uh, you can just take your finger and kind of rub it over those areas to blend it in. And that'll just kind of help blend everything together so you don't see all those pencil lines quite as much. And yeah, you can see how much of the pencil comes off on your hand. I'm gonna use a different finger now and blend it out. Highlight a little bit. So I don't want it to be perfectly white, but I definitely want that area to be lighter than the rest. So now that the majority of the shading's done, I'm just going back and adding some final touches to my drawing. So I'm gonna go back and just darken these edges up a bit. I'm holding my pencil this way so I get the darkest color out. And then I'll hold my pencil this way to transition into that more medium tone. And I always shade in the direction of the shape, so I've been shading it this whole time in more of like a circular kind of direction since it's a sphere. Rather than coloring it like this way or from left to right, it'll look more correct if you shade in kind of the shape that you're doing. Pretty three dimensional. Let's make it a little bit darker up there. And then I think I'm gonna go back in with my finger and just kind of blend it out. Again, to help kind of get rid of some of those scribbly looking lines. And it's okay if this takes a bit of time to accomplish. This is a little bit of a trickier skill to learn when it comes to drawing. So it's completely fine to go back and make adjustments and take your time. And then remember, you can always go back and erase in your highlight area if it's not as light as you want it to be. And there we go.